One of our top stories today, the new statistics that have come out just this morning on cancer rates in this country, Canadians' chances of surviving a fight with the disease. The report finds there's been big progress in treating some forms of cancer, especially breast and blood cancers, but other forms remain stubbornly lethal as ever. Christine Burak takes us through some of the numbers. Cancer is the number one cause of death in this country, killing about one in every four Canadians. But this latest report also shows overall survival rates are getting better. Researchers predict more than 220,000 Canadians will be diagnosed with cancer this year. About 63% of those patients will live at least five years. That's up from 55% in 1990. But a lot depends on the type of cancer. Thyroid and testicular have survival rates approaching 100%, while the chances of surviving esophageal or pancreatic cancer are quite low. According to this report, pancreatic cancer is expected to become the third deadliest cancer in the country, surpassing breast cancer. The biggest increases in survival were in blood cancers, including non-Hodgkin lymphoma, leukemia, and multiple myeloma. More of those patients are now living longer. Christine Birak, CBC News, Toronto. Let's look beyond those numbers with Leah Smith, who's a researcher, the senior manager of surveillance at the Canadian Cancer Society. And Leah is in Toronto this morning. Good morning to you. Good morning to you. Christine laid out the numbers. It might seem a little confusing, so hopefully you can sort this out for us because if you get the figure, one in two Canadians will get a cancer diagnosis, one in four will die, and yet we're being told that we're doing better. How do, how do you make sense of the two, reconcile the two? Absolutely. Uh, so as you said, we're estimating that nearly one in two Canadians will be diagnosed with cancer in their lifetime. Uh, this is in part reflective of the fact that we're living longer lives here in Canada and so the as we age, uh, there's more opportunity to, to get cancer. And so it's really kind of reflecting the fact that we are living longer. Uh, this report is showing that, in fact, we're making tremendous progress with cancer every single year. One of the things we looked at in this report is how cancer survival rates uh, have changed even since the early 1990s. And we saw that almost across the board, we're seeing increases in survival for different types of cancer. Uh, the most striking result of of, of those findings was the really remarkable increase in survival for blood cancers that we're seeing. And this increase in survival for blood cancers um, has been largely attributed to the research that has been done to make improvements in precision medicine. So the way we treat cancers, making sure that the treatment that we're, that we're administering is more tailored to the individual as, uh, and or more tailored to the cancer. And so this is really exciting stuff and shows us that we're continuing to move in the right direction. So we're really encouraged that um, if we continue investing in precision medicine and these new and innovative therapies that will continue to make progress and continue to achieve our goal of helping Canadians live longer and healthier lives. Right. Uh, but the, the big area of concern was pancreatic cancer, as Christine mentioned there. Um, still very difficult to deal with and on track to surpass breast cancer as the third most deadly form. What makes some cancers more stubborn than others? Uh, that's a great question. We've seen incredible improvement in breast cancer death rates um, over the past 30 or so years. So we've seen that since the breast cancer death rate peaked in 1986, it's been almost cut in half. And this is really uh, because of the progress that we've made with early detection and treatment. So a lot of success with cancers like breast cancer. You mentioned pancreatic cancer, which actually has the lowest survival rate of all the cancers we looked at. Only about 8% of people diagnosed with pancreatic cancer survive even five years past their diagnosis. Um, and unfortunately, um, we're just not seeing progress with that cancer uh, like we are with some of the other But do we cancers. know why, Leah? Why there's no, when you're making such advances elsewhere, why something like pancreatic cancer is such a difficult puzzle to sort out? Pancreatic cancer is notoriously difficult to treat for a number of different reasons. For one, it resides pretty deep in the body. And so uh, as the cancer develops, 
often the symptoms go unnoticed or, or, or don't even appear until the cancer is so large that it has spread or is pressing on or other organs in the body. So about 50% of pancreatic cancers are diagnosed um, at stage four, so after they've already spread. But even the earlier stage pancreatic cancers um, are relatively resistant in many cases to traditional chemotherapies and radiations. And so there really needs to be a lot more research to figure out how we're going to tackle this and other hard to treat cancers. Okay. You mentioned research. I want to ask you finally about the future. Precision medicine, you've pointed to as being something that's been very key in advances elsewhere. Precision medicine is very expensive, um, and we know about healthcare budgets and research budgets. Do you still have the research heft you need to continue making strides? Absolutely. I, I hope that results like this will really be uh, motivating and galvanating for the larger community to really recognize the progress we can have when we invest in research um, and these developments. Uh, what's also important about research is that when we see progress, for example, like we've seen with blood cancers, these learnings can then also be applied to other cancers to help make progress there. Um, so certainly the more we, we shine light on the progress that, we, that we've made, Made, hopefully the more we can be motivated to um, increase the research that is going on around this and also, as you mentioned, increase access to these medicines and treatments as they become available. Leah, thank you for the time today. We appreciate it. Leah Smith is a researcher. She's the Senior Manager of Surveillance at the Canadian Cancer Society.